Daring Abroad, in association with Equity PayPal. Today on the show, we feature Francis Kihanya, an accountant by training, but a realtor in profession. In 1993, Francis left the country to pursue further studies, but on seeing the huge financial losses suffered by Kenyans when it came to investment, he decided to come back. He now owns Manyata Capital, an investment company that deals in real estate. This is his story. I started Manyata so that if you live in uh, Boston, if you live in uh, Johannesburg, you can actually invest at the same price as somebody who lives in Kitengela or who lives in Adi River or lives in Naivasha. Francis Kihanya grew up in Gidunguri, Kiambu County. He attended Nyahururu Boys and in 1985 he joined the Strathmore School of Accountancy to pursue a career in accounts. When I started uh, my classes in Strathmore, in the School of Accountancy. After one year, they offered me a job as one of the junior accountants. So I started working with them, then ended up being the accountant for the School of Accountancy. Upon graduating, Francis quit his job at Strathmore and went to explore other employment opportunities. Went and worked as a financial accountant in the industrial area, in the largest uh, ink manufacturer called Coates Brothers. Then I became um, the chief accountant at Hearts rent car However, at the time, the country's economy was not doing well. And seeing that he was still young, Francis was advised by those close to him to dare abroad and further his studies. It was actually a time to leave the country because things were looking, it was, there was very little hope in the economy. Though my career was actually very solid, the economy was not looking strong. So a young Francis agreed and through the help of his relatives living in the U.S., he applied and got admittance into the Golden Gate University in San Francisco to pursue a master's in business administration. He left the country in August 1993, but once he arrived, he was met with a challenge that he did not foresee. I was expecting that uh, I would get quite a number of exemptions. Unfortunately, that did not happen. They started saying that I had to go back to undergrad, uh, and that was difficult because I was not, I didn't have another three, four years for undergraduate uh, learning things that I had already, you know, covered. This eventually resulted in Francis not completing his MBA and instead he began looking for employment. He ended up starting a business importing art made from banana leaves from Kenya as well as other African countries. But this also did not last long. It was in bad business, but then we ended up in art shows where they wanted the artist. And it got frustrating for Americans who want to meet the artist. They also want you to autograph the pieces. Now, I'm not the artist, so I couldn't do that. Despite the setback, Francis did not give up. He was determined to make it, and soon, another career opportunity presented itself. There was a big boom in real estate after September 11, when the terrorists uh, bombed uh, New York, the Twin Towers, and also the Pentagon. What the government did to boost the economy, they really liberalized the real estate market. They lowered interest rates, they made it very easy to buy a property. I thought, wow, this, this is interesting. Went for training, got licensed, and that started my journey in real estate. In the US, there's a very closely knit Kenyan community. So I ended up helping the Kenyans who live uh, in the US and, uh, and in particular in California a lot buy their properties in the US. But while he was assisting Kenyans buy property, he was made aware of the difficulties most Kenyans experience when investing back home. They also gave me horror stories of things that have gone wrong, at times in the hands of agents, at times in the hands of relatives, 
brothers, sisters, cousins. A lot of bad things have actually happened to Kenyans in the diaspora. Uh, around 2002, there was a developer who did a project that was funded by the World Bank. And the developer got the Minister of Finance and the president of OPIC, which is the investment arm of the World Bank. And he stood in between the two guys and nearly 400 Kenyans gave deposits for homes in Bulolongo. Many people invested $5,000, $7,000. That's a lot of money. No one got a house. This did not sit well with Kihanya, who felt inspired to do something about it. And in 2006, he made the decision to come back to Kenya and assist Kenyans living in the diaspora invest here. In the 21st century, people shouldn't be worried about investing back in their home because of the fear of being conned. We will find out how Francis was able to set up his real estate company right after the Miles Away segment. Today on Miles Away, we take a trip to the state of California, where Francis Kehanya lived. Nicknamed the Golden State, California is located to the west of the United States of America. It has a population of over 39 million people, making it the most popular state in the entire country. Its capital is Sacramento. The state has a number of popular tourist attractions. One such attraction is the Redwood National Park. The park is considered to be home of the tallest trees on earth. Another attraction is the Golden State Bridge in San Francisco. Known for its beauty, the bridge receives over 10 million tourists each year. In California, you can also find one of the oldest trees in the world. Named Methuselah, the tree is estimated to be over 4,800 years old. California also has the biggest economy in the country with a GDP of over 2.7 trillion US dollars. Similar to Kenya, California's major economic activity is agriculture. The state is the leading exporter of agricultural produce in the country. And that's miles away. There is land enough for uh, a police post. There is land for a market. Francis Kihanya had just landed in the country and was determined to set up a real estate company to assist Kenyans in the diaspora invest back home. This was, however, not as easy as he had expected. So it took me about six months to get all the registration and all the paperwork, which was very, I guess, very different from what was the norm in the U.S. When you wanted to establish a company in the U.S., an hour, two hours, you do the paperwork. It was a very seamless Process. He was further shocked with how informal and less regulated the real estate sector was in the country. Anyone could uh, sell, so basically you tell someone that this property is being sold and the next day they are offering it to people without any formal document authorizing you to do it. They just say, Suze, I love to town gear. But despite all these difficulties and differences, Francis was able to establish his business, Manyata Capital, along Waiyaki Way, Westlands, at the All Africa Conference of Churches building. We do land subdivisions, agency work. We also do what is called property syndication, where we bring together individuals and companies who want to invest in something. So we have the structures, we put structures. Let's assume there is a piece of land that is 100 acres and we cannot afford it. We invite people, we put structures in place, legal structures, and people buy shares into the project. We also do property management. So what has Manyata Capital been able to do differently since its establishment? Based on my training as a realtor in the US, we actually give you very concrete information of what we are offering you. And so one of the things that uh, we've also committed ourselves is to actually sell land that has ready titles. Once you buy, uh, we just sign on the dotted line. You give us whatever we had agreed and we hand you a title. Right now, the best investment in this country is actually investing in land. Francis is also committed to changing how Kenyans view real estate investing. Kenyans put education, their education for their kids first. 
So we came up with a product called Ploti Amasomo. And Ploti Amasomo is an alternative to other education products, which actually takes advantage of a booming real estate market to give parents something that they can use in the future for their child's education. Their unique service has seen them expand their focus from just Kenyans in the diaspora to also include Kenyans living locally. We've actually also started taking local Kenyans very seriously as part of our market. Right now, we're starting to see uh, the diaspora market, 60-70% of our business and 40% local Kenyans. Francis attributes this success to his experience in the United States. Living in the States really changed my perspective about discipline, about hard work, just knowing that you can do things in a clean, straightforward way and that you'll still be okay. But he still feels coming back was the best decision he ever made. If there's one good move that I made is actually coming back. I think there, there's a lot of growth opportunity for me, so I cannot look back. And this is his advice to anyone thinking of daring abroad in our diaspora bite. Anyone who has a chance to go outside, they really need to also, they also owe their homeland a responsibility and a duty of coming and sharing just one thing that you learned. Francis says we have barely scratched the surface when it comes to remittances as well as the real estate market in Kenya. He further adds that Kenyans in the diaspora want to send money home but are too afraid of being conned. But that is why he is here. He further adds that if we are able to streamline these sectors, we will marvel at the implication it will have to our economy. Until next week, I'm Michael Zimanji. PayPal is a faster, safer way to make and receive online payments. With the Equity Bank's PayPal withdrawal service, you can access funds received from anywhere around the globe. Even better, you can now withdraw funds from your PayPal account to your Equity Bank account at a reduced rate of as little as 1%. Visit Equity Self-Service Portal to link your PayPal account to your Equity Bank account today.